What's going on, everybody? It is February 22nd. We have a Thursday slate, and we're finally back. Whew. That was a long week. Um, All-Star week was atrocious. It was awful getting off of my uh, normal day-to-day, wake up early, record a video, do this for, you know, 15 hours a day life. I degenned some hockey. That was bad. Well, I mean, it was neutral financially, but I don't know anything about hockey. So, you know, it's been just like a week off and it's been awful. And now we're back and I'm excited to do this and it's going to be fun. And I'm diving in big time today. We are doing a full 150 lines into the clutch shot today. So... Yeah, it's going to be uh it's going to be a wild one. Top prize, Hundy spot. Coming for it. Coming for it tonight. Let's just get in it. Oh, I feel like I haven't done this in forever. I hope it's like riding a bike, even though I don't also ride a bike very often. First game up, we've got two, four, six game slate which I knew, but for some reason I was thinking it was an eight-game slate. I don't know why. Um, it's not bad, and there's a lot of weird stuff going on, so I've babbled enough. First game, Hornets hosting the Brooklyn Nets. Hornets with a 110.5 implied total, which is fourth. And uh, I just had to make sure that I was actually recording this. It's been a while. I'm out of the game. Uh, Hornets fourth in the implied total, six and a half point favorites at home against the Nets. Um, I haven't seen any really interesting news from the Hornets, like they're going to be doing anything fun. Um, so business as usual here. Let's move the Charlotte. There it is. There's the pop up I've been waiting for. First up is Kemba, 9100 on FanDuel, 8600 on DK. Um, I mean, he's fine. But I don't really have any issue with it. <sighs> Let's see. I am a little nervous at how much Brooklyn limits three-point attempts. Someone's going to live in the mid-range here. I don't know if it's going to be Kemba or not. I just don't know who else it would be on this team. There's a ton to like. Um, Kemba's definitely a three on both sides. Uh, but there's definitely a lot to like for the Hornets. You should expect... I mean... Kemba, Dwight, Batum, Marvin Williams all look pretty good. Dwight, 9,000 on FanDuel, 8,400 on DK. Man, the... The Nets are such a weird team. Just, they'll give up mid-range shots all day. They just can't stop people from making them. It's crazy. So, as we know, uh, Brooklyn has been uh, a turnstile for centers this season. Uh, probably the worst team, if not, one, you know, definitely one of the worst three. So, it's hard to ignore Dwight coming off of... A week's worth of rest. Like of all the guys on the team, I'm sure he needs it more than anything. I hope he, I hope he just chilled. Doubt it. I doubt it a lot. I don't really like the price for Dwight though. It's like they knew his he was about to play Brooklyn. He's still just a three for me. Um, I'll have him a, a, a decent amount. He's not my favorite center on the slate. He's number two. Um, we'll get to number one in a little bit. Nick Batum, I think he's in for a big one tonight. I think he's going to be the person that lives in the mid-range the most. I mean, he ob he obviously does just in general, but I could see him taking advantage here. 6300 on FanDuel, 5900 on DK. The price is okay. Um, you're looking for like 30 and change from Batum. Um you know, hard to look back. I can't say last two weeks, so last three weeks, basically. 
had a few 30 point games got into the 40s a little bit we're already back in january so i need to shrink this a little bit or do i um what's today so that's one week two weeks three weeks yeah no that date stays again i don't i'm not wild about the prices here for the hornets um but i'm gonna have uh, a solid amount of exposure to these three guys <clears throat> And probably Marvin Williams to an extent, MKG to an extent, Kaminsky to an extent. At least on FanDuel. Kaminsky on FanDuel just has a really ridiculous price. Uh, let's take a look at Marvin Williams. 4200 on FanDuel, 4200 on DK. That's a really great price for him on FanDuel. Um, you know, you need north of 20. In the four games since he's been back, he was over 20, three of those four. Um, it is a tricky game for him because he does take half of his shots from three, which is, you know, Brooklyn's biggest benefit on defense. I don't know if I said that right. You know what I mean. They 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 stop threes. Um, I'm going to say Marvin Williams is actually a four. Uh, no, he's a three on FanDuel. He's a four on DK. That's not where you type that at all. I've got no flow right now. I feel like I haven't done this in forever. Should have just made up games over the weekend in this past week just to keep the momentum alive. MKG 3900 on FanDuel, 4100 on DK. Uh, he's a four on FanDuel. I don't really want him at all on DK. Only reason I'm super interested in MKG is because he doesn't take threes. So if he gets on a little bit of a heater, you know, get into the rim or, you know, mid-range stuff, could be could be nice. Let's move to the Nets. Ah, Nets, 103 implied total is 11th. Not very good. Um, still no uh, Rondé Hollis-Jefferson. Uh, no Karis LeVert, so... You know, it's going to be business as usual for them, or at least business as recent for them. Damari Carroll, 6,100 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. Hmm. I was hoping for a better price there. I won't go too crazy. He's just a four. That's also not how you spell his name. Needs 30. You know what? I, I'm probably shortchanging him a little bit. Needs 30 for value on FanDuel. I mean, he's been there twice in the last couple. Um, another guy that I would expect the rest to be good for. So, yeah, I'm comfortable with Carroll as a three. Quincy AC. 3,800 on FanDuel, 4,100 on DK. Um, that's just exceptional pricing. Uh, you're looking for, you know, 20 basically at an AC to hit value. Uh, in his last three games, he's played, you know, 30 plus minutes, he had 21, 30, and 16. Um, you know, he's risky, but at that price, he's exceptional. I'm actually going to say Quincy AC is a 2. No, uh, I need more than one type of ranking. He's an exceptional value, but it's not like you would want 80% Quincy AC or anything tonight. Uh, there's a lot of risk there. I'm going to say he's a two on FanDuel. I'm comfortable with that. And then uh, he's a three on DK. Dinwiddie is 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. Not a horrible matchup for him. Uh, got the fire lit under him for winning the uh, skills challenge or whatever the hell that thing's called. It might be skills challenge. I have no idea. I watched him make one shot and I turned it off. It was awful. You need 35. Um, he had three 40 point games in the run up to uh, All Star break. So I'm okay with it, but. He's just a little expensive. He's a four. 
Alan Crabb, I'm not terribly interested in. Um, but he has been playing exceptionally well. Four straight games in the 30s heading into the All-Star break. 37, 39, 34, 31. And you need him to hit 27 for value. So, again, much like Dinwiddie, I'm going to say that he's a four. Got to pause a second. Okay, let's do this. Yeah, I, I don't expect myself to end up with a ton of Brooklyn. There's a lot of good stuff out there today, so I don't want to force too much. Um, so my exposures here will likely be low outside of Quincy AC. D'Angelo Russell's interesting. 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. Um, you would think, like, the reins would probably be off coming off of all-star break he needs 30 um he had 34 right before the break 37 it's a it's a good spot for him it's not like charlotte is some crazy defensive team it's just sort of a slower game so i'll say he's a four and then just because it's center i'll say jared allen is a four I don't have much interest in Joe Harris for this one. Though maybe I should. At least on FanDuel, 3,700. All right, to the magic we go. Orlando hosting the New York Knicks, which are a real bad team right now. 107.75 implied total is 7th. They're 4-point favorites at home against the Knicks. Um, expectation is that Aaron Gordon and Vooch are both back and playing. And for New York, obviously no Porzingis. Um, and news out of New York is that Jarrett Jack will not be seeing any significant run. And that Moutier is likely the starter now. So, yeah. Go Knicks. That's all I you guys can't see what I'm doing. There's a little thing on my monitor. It looks ridiculous. Okay, we're good. First up, Fournier. Uh, 6400 on FanDuel, 5600 on DK. It's not a bad price at all. Um, I'm just worried about his shots with Gordon and Vooch back. Uh, he should get better looks, but not necessarily more frequent looks. What was his uh, correlations when Vooch or Gordon play? I, I want the opposite. So, Gordon especially. Shots when Gordon didn't play. Interesting. Takes more shots when Gordon plays than when he didn't. Usage is higher than when Gordon plays. Okay, yeah, I, I, I like Fournier here tonight. It's a three. Um, he's borderline two on DK. Needs 32 for value on FanDuel. Um, can get there without much trouble. The Knicks are bad. Uh, yeah, I'm going to definitely look into exposure there. Um, that's a good spot. I like it. Aaron Gordon, 8,500 on FanDuel, which is... I don't get that at all. 7,400 on DK. I will basically have none of him. As best I can tell. I, I mean, that's just a ridiculous, ridiculous price point for him. Let me make sure I'm right. Okay, so even just using his... Yeah, he, he should be $1,000 cheaper. It's just that he has so much upside in his number. 
Maybe the rest has helped him. I can't imagine playing Aaron Gordon at 8,500 on FanDuel unless you've got this thought process in your head that he is just going to absolutely roast the Knicks. And I think that sort of makes the implication that he's a better player than he actually is. Um, I'm not even listing him. I don't want to have him at all. That price is insane. I'm sure he'll be in one or two of 150 lineups, but I can't even imagine rostering him in just a general scenario. He's so far away from Draymond Green for me. It's not even close. Whew. Okay, I'm going to look real wrong about that. I have a feeling. <laughs> Anytime I'm so definitive, I feel like everybody's just super excited to kick me in the jump when I'm wrong. DJ Augustin, 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. That's not bad. Um, needs 27. That's a stretch. I'll say he's a 4. Vooch. 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,200 on DK. You would think he could just be uh, really good <laughs> against Cantor. Um, Knicks don't really do anything sort of weird on D. Vooch would need 40. It's been so long since he's played. But he was on quite the heater. Uh, prior to injuring his hand. It was his hand, right? Yeah. I don't know what I'm looking for here. Needs 40. Ba -ba -ba. Is there an easier way to see this? All right, so before he was hurt. 30, 30, 50, well that's Yahoo, that's same scoring. 30, 35, 35, 60, 45. 45, 60, 50, 60. I mean, it's going to take him a little bit to like play himself into shape, but he was playing an insane level of basketball. This is a guy that was 10,000 when he went down, had multiple games at 50 or higher. So that's seven points higher than value. Value, 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 just smashing. Why wouldn't he do that here? He had 57.9 against the Knicks at 7,500 salary. Yeah, I like Vooch a lot tonight. Um, he doesn't grade out, like, numbers-wise perfectly, but if you believe in his, uh, his boost this year, he has the opportunity to have a big game tonight. Minutes will be interesting, you know, he is just working his way back, but it might be this might be one of those situations where you get in at seventy nine hundred and like Monday morning when we wake up he's ninety five hundred. Wouldn't shock me. Jonathan Simmons oh, not J Jonathanson. <laughs> it's always something new. Uh Let's see, 4,700 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. I'm, I'm not super interested in it at all. He's just a four. And that's probably all the playable stuff you can get in Orlando. So let's go to this Knicks team. Because this is, this is going to be, uh, I don't know what. 103.75 implied total is 10th. Um, Magic, obviously not spectacular on defense. No Porzingis. And we've got uh, a new starting point guard. And unfortunately, it's not the one that it should be. Although, I get Moody is better than Jared Jack. Okay. Beasley. 7,000 on FanDuel. 7,100 on DK. Um, amazing spot for Beasley on FanDuel. 
he's a two for me on FanDuel. Um, 7,000 is just kind of insane. Not a, Well, not insane. It's just, I mean, I've got him projected to hit 5x, which is so rare for me. Um, you need 35. His last four without Przingis, 32, 33, 36, 41. So ability to go off shouldn't sink you because he's just going to keep shooting. You know, not much to worry about from the Magic. I'm not really worried about Aaron Gordon's defense, if that's who's guarding him. Although it'll probably be Simmons, maybe? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, Michael Beasley is a 2 for me on FanDuel. He's a 3 for me on DK. Just, you know, the slightly higher price on DK is not as appealing. Tim Hardaway, 6,200 on FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. Uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about it after February 14th. I remember going through Tim Hardaway's, like, shooting, being like, you know, 1 for 11, 2 for 14, 0 for 8. He went absolutely bananas. He quieted off big time in the second half, but what did he end up shooting? Yeah, 14 of 24. <laughs> he made more shots. Oh my god, then he had, he made 15 shots in his three previous games, but he had been shooting like ass, and he did, he was like something ridiculous in the first half, does it say? Yeah, 12 of 14, hilarious, would have been nice to have him, um, needs 30, I mean, in a GPP, sure, but there's no reliability there. A dude has like an aversion to scoring. It's really kind of crazy and such a testament to the Knicks to give him all that money as a dude that just is, what's his true shooting? Uh, Tim Hardaway, junior basketball reference. It's gotta be bad, right? Like, super, super bad. Yeah, 52%. Good God. Hey, at least it's only the first year of that contract. Sorry, Knicks fans. Did, did see a report that they tried to trade for Malik Monk. The deadline, so that's kind of fun. Courtney Lee. 4,200 on FanDuel. 4,700 on DK. You're looking for 21. Um... I mean, he's steady. Uh, this wouldn't be the spot where I would expect him to just go insane. Cantor, 7,500, 7,600 on DK. By the way, Courtney Lee should only be played on FanDuel. 4,700 price point on DK is nuts. Cantor needs 38. I mean, I could see him having a good game as well as Vooch. I'm going to say Cantor is a 3 on FanDuel and a 4 on DK. Again, prices on DK just aren't very good here. Frankie Smokes, minimum salary on FanDuel, 3600 on DK. I don't think there's a ton of upside in his number. Um... Oh my god, he had negative points on my birthday. <laughs> He's had negative points twice. Now, seven minutes is one thing. 21 minutes. It's fucking hard to do. Uh, I'd be okay with having him in like a A lineup. He's a four. Just because of the minimum salary thing. He should get enough minutes to like not put up negative point six. But the thing we're all here for is Emmanuel Moutier. Moutier is 4,600 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. He'll have, you know, DJ Augustin as his running mate on the opposite side. He should get, I've got him in for 25 minutes. Uh, I don't see it going any lower than that based on all this Jarrett Jack news. So I think there's a ton of upside in the minutes themselves if he's playing well. But he needs 23 for value. Um, when he did get that run and got the 29 minutes on the 11th, he put up 29, which would be huge. Um, for me, he's just a straight two. 
uh, he's in one of the better spots of the day. Now to the Bulls. Going to be another weird one. Um, this whole game is going to have an interesting fantasy slant. So the Bulls, 104.25 implied total is ninth. They are 5.5 point underdogs at home to the Sixers. Sixers defense has been exceptional um, on the year, uh, especially when Embiid plays, which we all expect Embiid to play today. So it's hard to love a lot of Chicago, but they've got some interesting value stuff going on, so we need to dig in. Jerry and Grant is apparently just not playing anymore for the Bulls. They're going to be uh, running with some additional youth. Uh, Felicio is going to be getting additional run. I believe David Nawaba is slotted to start. So I, this is going to be a grab bag for the Bulls. Getting this right is going to be essential. I would expect, you know, like something weird in this Bulls section to be important in a in a finishing lineup tonight. Markkanen, 6,400 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. So you're looking for 32. Um, since he's been back, hasn't hit that number, but he had two 28s and a 31. Hopefully the rookie wall has uh, been reinforced a little bit, or however you would want to say that, and got some a little bit of rest. So I'm going to say Markkanen is a three. Chris Dunn, uh, back after, you know, having um, tried to eat the floor with his face. Didn't look good. Uh, 6400 on FanDuel, 6800 on DK. It's an exceptional price on FanDuel. I'm nervous about his minutes. Um, you know, he was on a minutes restriction before the break. I don't. I haven't seen anything to say um, that he's going to be on it any longer. So I've got him in here for 30 minutes. And if that's the case, um, you know, I think he's an immense value at 6,400. Uh, but I am nervous about it. So I'm going to say that he's a three on FanDuel and a four on DK. But Chris Dunn can jump up to a two on FanDuel as news comes out. I don't love things against Philly, um, but Dunn's price is just a, a bit too low for me. Zach Levine, 7,100 on FanDuel, 7,000 on DK. You'd need 35. Um, he feels pretty safe. He said three games at 34 fantasy points recently, a couple into the 40s. I don't necessarily like Zach Levine's game, but he's in a much different situation now as a primary guy for the Bulls compared to uh, where he was for the Wolves. So I can see, you know, boosting him up a little bit, but he's still just a three for me. And in fact, with the matchup, I should probably put him as a four. Now, David Nwaba is 3,500 on FanDuel, 3,500 on DK. Um, he's been okay in the minutes that he's gotten this year. Um, but I don't see a ton in him offensively. Uh, you know, 13% usage rate. Doesn't get a lot from points. Not a guy that takes a ton of shots. Um, he's a four just because of value in minutes. But I wouldn't want a ton of it. Bobby Portis is 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DraftKings. Um, so you're looking 30 from Portis which is right where he was in the last two. You would in, you would think he would get a little bit extra run with this little youth movement they've got going on. But again, he's going to see you know, a Philly defense that is is good. Um I'll say Portis is a 4. I just hate this matchup. Now, Felicio is the one that uh, I think most people will be taking a gander at. He's 3500 on FanDuel, 3000 on DK, so minimum salary on both sites. Um, he's expected to get additional run. I have him in here for 22 minutes right now, which is a lot. He had 20 minutes on January 31st, put up 25 fantasy points. Let's take a closer look at him and see what he's done in games where he's gotten the run. 
I don't think that there's a lot of them. Yeah, it's basically the only one. Let's see his per minute stats. Hasn't been great on a per minute basis this year. Um, but again, you're getting a guy at minimum salary um, on both sites that's supposed to get, you know, at least 20 minutes, supposed to start. I don't think it's a great spot for him, though. Um, he's getting Embiid. He's getting an exceptional defense. Um, he's a four for me on both sites. I know that sounds ridiculous. Um, and it's easy for him to provide some value, but I don't think that he's just like a lock guy tonight. Now, if... Hoiberg came out and said oh, Felicio is going to play 30 minutes. Totally different story. But for right now, I don't, I don't see it, and I don't like the matchup. And no interest in Justin Holiday or Denzel Valentine campaign. Rolo is basically done. So, so let's go to Philly. Now Philly is the spot that I'm looking the most right now. Uh, Sixers 109.75 implied total is sixth. Exceptional matchup. Chicago terrible on D. They're going to be working in guys that haven't been playing as much, so you would think communication might be a little bit of an issue. Um, they're if they weren't playing for the Bulls, there's a you know I would guess that they're not also very good either. Um, so the third guy on this list is going to be the one that I want the most. But we'll start with Ben Simmons because he's at the top. Simmons is nine thousand on both sites. So you're looking 45 on FanDuel. Uh, that DK price is uh, not appealing to me whatsoever. But he's been playing pretty well. Um, four straight games in the 40s and then the 55-pointer on the way out before the break. Um, you're looking for 45. This is as good of a spot for Simmons as he's going to find. But just a three for me. Saric, 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Uh, so if we're looking 33-ish. Um, he's basically in that area all the time. Uh, Saric feels like an incredible cash play tonight. Uh, also just a three for me. I will have you know a decent amount of him. But feels pretty safe. Embiid, 10-2 on FanDuel, 9,700 on DK. So we're looking for 50. Um, had a 60-pointer right before the break, had 54 right before the break. Uh, he's getting Chicago. He's getting a team that isn't very good defensively. He's coming off of a little bit of rest. Um, and I think that he's in the best spot at center tonight. Um, he's my favorite guy as of right now. Uh, I don't think that anybody truly stands out at center but I think Embiid will be the guy that I end up having the most exposure to. Still just a three. Um, and it's because... Where can we hop to? I see a lot of similarities in Embiid or Howard. I don't mean from ceiling, but just sort of like their expectation. Uh, Vooch, um, DeAndre. It's hard... It's hard for any separation. I'm, I'm just betting more on uh, the potential of Embiid, not necessarily like the median outcome for him. Bobby Covington is 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. Uh, so we're looking for 27. He has only hit that once, almost hit it on my birthday, but only hit it once in the two weeks before the All-Star break. I think he needed this break more than anybody else on this team. Um, he's close to being a two for me. I like him a lot here. I think the matchup is good. Bulls give up a lot of threes. I think Rolo, or Robert Covington just needed uh, just a little bit of rest. Just you know, he wasn't playing to his potential for a little bit. I think he might have just been tired. So I'm anxious to see how he comes out. And then we've got Redick, 5,100 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK, looking 25. Uh, great matchup for him. Another guy that I'm sure used the rest. Um, 
been in and around that 25 number for most of the games prior to the break. I plan on having um, a lot of stacks of Sixers guys sprinkled through my stuff. Um, lots of combos of these guys. So that's, that's where my main focus is for right now. Cavs, 112.5 implied total is second. They are five-point favorites at home against the Wizards. New look Cavs, obviously. Wiz still without John Wall. Um, so first guy up is going to be Braun. 11-6 on FanDuel, 11-8 on DK. You know, coming off of a pretty good all-star game for him. That DraftKings price is, I can't imagine paying 11-8 for him on DraftKings. That's so far removed from like being able to return value. He would need 58 on FanDuel for value. I mean, I'm okay with it, but I don't... There's so many weapons now, well, weapons now that I think LeBron has an easier opportunity to, like, be a facilitator and not necessarily a guy that has to go and get buckets. And if that's the case, I think that sort of lowers his ceiling a bit and raises his floor. JR, 4,800 and 4,700. Um, just because Washington has uh, the ability to give up some threes, I'll say he's a four, but that's GPP only. But I'm assuming everybody knows that. Tristan Thompson, 4,200 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. Hmm. Needs 20. Cleveland, a terrible offensive rebounding team. Washington, a terrible defensive rebounding team. Um, I'd be okay with a little bit of Tristan. Bet on some offensive rebounds and some putbacks. George Hill, 4,500, 4,600 on DK. So he needs 23. Wasn't there in the first two with the squad. Um, I'll say he's just a four as well. Uh, nothing on Cleveland is really jumping out, as you can tell by this uh, mass of black and red color. Rodney Hood, 4,800 and 4,900. You know, again, just a four. It's hard to invest in any of these guys right now. Jordan Clarkson, 5,500. That seems aggressive that's probably it for me for Cleveland let's go to Washington Wizards uh, 107.5 implied total is 8th at this point um, you know, I just shrug for Cleveland's defensive numbers they were atrocious but they don't have 2 thirds of those guys any longer so it's really hard to use that as my sort of baseline I assume they're still just not a good defensive team because they never are um, but I can't just they're not they're not the same awful defensive team they were before so Bradley Beal is 9500 on FanDuel 9400 on DK that is a monstrous price he needs close to 50 put up 64 uh, right before the break feel like I would be forcing it if I went with Beal. Um, but I'm hoping the break did did good things for him. So, wow, Cleveland really keeps people off the line defensively. That's crazy. They just gave up mad buckets. <sighs> Otto Porter, 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. So you're looking 38, 39 on before the break. Got a 47-pointer. I think Porter looks pretty good here. I'll say that he's a 3. Kelly Oubre, 4,700 on FanDuel. Same price on DK. So we're looking for like 24. Had a bit of a stinker. 
right before the break, but had a 26 point game, 32. Um, there's some upside for Ubre there. If I remember correctly, when I looked at small four, there was just a wasteland of similar dudes. Yeah. It's weird right now. I'm hoping for some interesting news. I hope the live stream is fun tonight. Uh, I didn't mention that uh, in the intro. Of course, going live tonight starting at 6. I cannot wait. It's been too long. It'll be fun to have some interactions, do some talks, change my... I'll, I'll be tweaking uh, exposures, and waiting to export all those lineups and get them in. Not tracking it. I don't want to deal with the swings. The idea of seeing it go from... Like, for a brief instance, being in first and having a... You are now winning $100,000 there. And then dropping to 8th place and it saying, like, you are now winning 60 bucks. I'm not sure I can handle that right now. <laughs> It'll be awful. Markeith Morris, 6000 on FanDuel, 5400 on DK. He's 30. Um, this is another guy that I think could have definitely used some rest... I'd be okay with saying Marquise Morris is a three. I sneakily like Washington tonight. Sadoransky, 5,900 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. I don't see a ton of value there. He's just a four. And then Gortat, um... <laughs> I don't know. If Wall were back, it would be one thing. I'd, who knows? I don't expect him to get the minutes, but... Because they won't have any problem with Mahinmi guarding Tristan, so I, I don't have anything else here. Kings hosting the Thunder. Uh, Kings 102.5 implied total. Dead last. They are 7.5 point underdogs at home. Uh, this should be the beginning of the end for the Kings. Willie Cauley Stein is 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. Uh, man, if he wasn't going up against Steven Adams, Willie Cauley Stein would be in an exceptional spot right here. Needs 35 on FanDuel. Uh, had 36 right before the break. Gets up into the 30s pretty regularly. I think this is a good price for Willie Cauley Stein. Um, I'm nervous about the matchup a little bit, but I think that he has the opportunity to provide some value if possible, so I'll say that he's a three. Uh, Bogdan, coming off the heater of the All-Star break, 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK, so he needs 30. Uh, he's been there one, two, three, four, five times in the last couple weeks. I'm going to count that 29.6. If I would uh, get rid of that decimal, round that shit up, I'd be right. But I still only want him as a four because, uh, you know, Oklahoma City's good. Really good defensively, and uh, Sacramento is not really good at, well, anything. Apparently, uh, forcing turnovers on defense isn't horrible. Justin Jackson, 4,200 on FanDuel. Uh, he would need 21 at 29 right before the break. Um, opportunities are there, at least. I'd say he's a four. Does like to take a lot of corner threes, which is the one sort of thing that Oklahoma City is willing to give up. Um, so it does make it a little interesting. I could see that being, you know, a little bit of a sneaky play. I don't have a ton of interest in De'Aaron Fox at 5,700. Um, you're going to need him to get to like 28, which he can do. Hmm, have they played at all? Oh, he's got pink eye? Dude, I've had pink eye. Pink eye blows. Yeah, hasn't been anything spectacular against them in the past. Um, I don't really like his price or anything, so I'm I'm not even on him. Scal, though, 5,100 on FanDuel, 4,500 on DK. Uh, you're looking for 25. Hasn't played a ton recently. Has been dinged up, but 
I like Scowl a lot. He needs 25. In the three games before he got, I don't know, unceremoniously removed and then uh, sat out. But 27, 31, 33 at 29 here. Um, if the shoulder's feeling better, and I'm sure a week off helped, I'd be down to uh, have a little bit of Scal. I think he's a three. I'm a big Scal guy. I'm good for the rest of this. Let's go to OKC and take a look at the studs. Let's just grab these first four names here and dump them in because obviously they're in play. First up, Paul George. Uh, 9,500 on FanDuel, 8,800 on DK. It's a big number, but Sacramento sucks. Serious balls. Somebody's going off here. You just got to make sure you figure out which one it is. Uh, OKC with the 110 implied total is fifth. Um, everything looks pretty good for them tonight. Paul George needing close to 50. He's so much better when Russ isn't on the floor. I'm not sure that I can go super wild about it. My only sort of uh, excitement here would be that he shoots threes at a pretty decent clip. Um, and that sort of plays into his hand. Sacramento gives them up pretty crazy. So I'm going to say Paul George is a three. I'd much rather have Paul George than LeBron tonight. Uh, you know, dollar for dollar. Um, just seems a little easier to make things work if you do. Russ is a flat 12 on FanDuel, 11-5 on DK. You need 60. Um... I'm more than okay with that. My God, Russ. He's a three. Uh, he's, he's Russell Westbrook. He's crazy. And um, I'm sure he's going to hit the ground running. Steven Adams, 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,600 on DK. Looking for 35. Put up 51 um, right before the break. 35 is pretty high for him, but he's super steady. Sacramento, just not very good defensively. It's hard for me to go super nuts for him, just because the Kings give up so many threes, which obviously doesn't necessarily help him. They're not a horrible rebounding team, so that kind of plays against Adams. So Adams is going to be a four. I like him, but as good of a matchup as this is, I don't think that it necessarily fits his strengths as a center. And then Mello, 6,100 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. Another guy that I'm sure uh, definitely needed a couple days off. Needs 30. Um, he had 37 in one of the games prior to the break. Uh, I'm more than okay with Mello here. I will have a, a decent chunk of Oklahoma City. And then finally, last game. We're making it through this, guys and gals. Golden State Warriors hosting the LA Clippers. 121.5 implied total is first for the Warriors. They are 10.5 point favorites at home. Here we go. Um, I'll go all the way down to Iguodala. So, Draymond, 8,600 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DK. Needs 43. Gets there, you know, at 43, 46, and <clears throat> 59 in his last three games that he has played. No reason to suspect that can't happen again. I'm going to say that he's a three, but I do want to see his history against the Clippers. Not that I have, not that I like to use that sort of stuff, but especially with the teams being very different. But he's the type of guy that, like, gets up for things. So I want to see if that's, like, a thing for him. Yeah, I kind of figured, like, more often than not, he would be defensively leaning. Okay. Curry, 9,300 on FanDuel, <clears throat> 9,800 on DK. I like it. 46. Um, it's been quiet, just, like, mid-30s games. For a while now. 
normally just absolutely roasts the Clippers. Um, I'm going to say that Curry is a 2 on FanDuel and a 3 on DraftKings. DraftKings price is really bad. Well, not bad, but way worse. Um, I like Curry a lot there. More than I did when I first looked at this yesterday. Likes to play against the Clippers. First game back after the All-Star break. You know, should be energized. I like it. Durant is 10-7 on FanDuel. 10-3 on DK. Uh, you're looking for close to 55. Obviously no issues with that. Um, just a 3 for me, though. Actually, you know what? He's a four. I'd rather have Draymond and get the savings. I think I like Paul George more than Durant, too, on a dollar-for-dollar dollar basis. Clay, 6,400 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK. What's his history like against the Clippers? Kind of figured. Yeah, I mean, he needs 32, uh, can get on a heater to get there, doesn't happen as often as you would like it to. Um, if he went to the line a little bit more, I'd be happier. I'm going to say that he's just a 3, and Iggy at 3,900 and 3,700, looking for 20, um, I'm just going to say that he's a 4. Final game, or final team rather, Clippers. 111 implied total is third. Um, let's get into it. Gallo, first guy up. Another person. Ugh, so many of these guys that are just like struggling with injuries. Oh, I felt good. I hope uh, I hope Gallo's ass feels better. <laughs> 6,300 on Fanduel, 6,100 on DK. Gallo needs 30 plus um, in the stretch of games since he's been back. He's had four games above 30. Um, yeah, I, no issues there. He's probably a little underpriced. Tobias Harris, uh, 6,700 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. So you're looking for like 34. Uh, multiple games in that area as well. Uh, I'm going to say that he's a three. My only concern is just that he's uh, they're playing Golden State and they're good defensively. But there's a lot of fantasy points to be had in a game against Golden State. Scores get up there. Austin Rivers is probably the best look on uh, the Clippers tonight. 5,100 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. So you're looking for 25, 26. Uh, it's been right around there for three of those games. Gets a ton of run because his daddy's the coach. <laughs> I don't like him. I don't really like Doc. But he will forever be in my heart for dropping that dagger in Tyler Zeller's face. Wow, Fuck you, Carolina. Rivers is a three. DeAndre Jordan, 8,100 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DK. Now this is something I want to look at. He needs 40. Put up 60 right before the break. Had 40 in the game before that. Golden State, not very good against uh, centers this year. But DeAndre has also not been very good against Golden State. That's really weird to me. How does DeAndre Jordan get eight shot attempts in a game? Especially in a game where you get five offensive rebounds. Like, I just, just you need to be more aggressive, be more involved. I want to like DeAndre Jordan. Uh, I have some reservations. Um, but I will say that he's a four for me. No, that he's a three for me. I'll have some combos of Clippers, guys. Does anything go good with DeAndre? Lots of Jordans in the NBA. He's the only one with Jordan at the end for right now. Things have been going great for him and Tobias Harris. Uh, probably not going to see much Blake Griffin with him. So pretty much just if I'm going to have DeAndre. I'm bringing Tobias Harris along for the ride. 
Lou Will, 7,000 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DK. You're looking for 35. Um, I don't expect him to stop playing the way that he's playing. I still expect him to get 30 minutes, gun shots, you know, get to 35-ish fantasy points, hopefully get on a heater. So three. Uh, the Clippers are, I mean, value spot today. Something's going to pop off here. I'm glad I'm playing 150 lineups. I'm bound to figure it out. At least I hope. Now, it'll probably be Montrez Harrell. I don't have none of them. Avery Bradley, 3,900 on FanDuel, 4,300 on DK. You need 20 from Bradley. Um, this is actually a spot where I like Bradley. I wonder if uh, that makes sense to me. So, this is sort of like the reason you have Bradley, right? To be playing big minutes against a Golden State team. What did he, he break his dick? Athletic Pubaldia. Sports hernia. Just say sports hernia then. Don't make it seem like you ripped his pubes out or something. Whatever. Um, what's his history look? Golden State. Okay, so he has come to play against Golden State in the past. Um, what are some others? Like? How about Cleveland? Now... What about San Antonio? Houston? Okay. I'm going to say Avery Bradley's a three on FanDuel at least. I'll say he's a four on DK. I mean, they're going to want him out there defensively, at least you would think. So I feel like Avery Bradley and Lou Williams cannot be correlated for this game. We'll see. And that is it, guys. That's everything. We made it. We're back. We've got videos again. Let's run the optimizer. See what happens. So good to be back. I don't know what we're going to do when basketball is over. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm going to just play baseball. But there's something about the basketball game. It's the perfect balance. It's... You know, like guys that are supposed to do well generally do okay. I, I don't know. It's it's the perfect fantasy game for me. So let's change these options. Add some rando into it. And we'll see what we get. Healthy amount of Beasley. Healthy amount of uh, Curry. Healthy amount of Russ. I can dig it. I can dig that for sure. It's probably more David Nwaba than I would like. Embiid at the top for centers. It's just a mishmash. Do I have exposures set? Yeah, I do. No wonder that's coming up weird. Let's blow those exposures out. Let's try this again. That makes more sense. I mean, no shock that Beasley's going to be in a ton of lineups right out of the gate. But Embiid, the dominant center. Um, lots of Quincy AC plus others. You'll note very minimal amount of LeBron. I'm surprised at how little Paul George compared to Durant, but okay. Hitting on the, like, Oubre, Nawaba, Gallo, Porter, Covington, Damari Carroll portion, I think is going to be pretty big. Um, lots of either Lou Will or Avery Bradley. I'm going to have to look into, I know there's not a very large sample, but I want to see how well they play together. That might be something that I lock in either... Or, like, you know, minimize the amount that they can be together. I can't imagine they correlate well. And then point guard. Lots of Curry, lots of Chris Dunn, lots of Russ, lots of Rivers. I'm surprised at the amount that Moutier has been knocked down, but I'll probably be a little higher on him. Let's dump it all into DK. So yeah, I expect to be live starting at 6. Might be a little earlier than that. 
Um, we shall see. But it'll be fun to go live again. It's been so long. <laughs> did I move the DK? I did indeed. Projections in. Ah, I feel like I could breathe again. My normal life is back. I miss you guys. I know you can't say anything back to me right now, but I assume you miss me too. Let's do a hundred lineups of DK. There's more Moody A. A lot of Willie Colley Stein. I like the Fournier dropping in there. Felicio, a lot more in play on FanDuel at minimum salary on a place where you can play more than one center and when you have uh, power forward eligibility. That's how you start using those like uh, wild card type lineup slots to your benefit. Oh boy, I like some of this. None of that really jumps out at me. I mean, I would want to neuter some of those uh, ownerships just in general, but Willie Colley Stein is probably a bit too high at 63%. They don't really know the matchup. This curve kind of goes the other way. But that's sort of the breakdown for what we've got right now. And that's it for me. I'm done. Um, I'm excited to be back. We're going to kill this tonight. Going crazy. 150 lineups. Never done it before on the NBA. So what's the worst that could happen? I've been entering $500 single entries. So the goal is I hope I don't have uh, 150 lineups <laughs> below the green line. Shout out to uh, shout out to that dude on Reddit. Um, but that's it. I'm done. Uh, thank you guys for being here. You guys know the drill. Like, subscribe, Twitter, Reddit, everywhere you want to find me, come find me. Um, the grind is back on. Lots of content coming out soon. So let's do this. Have a good one.